All right, here we are, everybody, the highest in me. Bow to the highest in you. So we'll start our practice with a few minutes of silence. And uh, yeah, please sit comfortably. and allow yourself to settle into your experience without trying to modify your experience. One of the beautiful things about sessions like this is you just show up the way you are. You don't have to show up as your positive self or your spiritual self. Just show up the way you are. And meet yourself in an unmodified way, uncontrived way. Because there's no expectation that you need to be a certain way beyond a very basic level of uh, not disturbing others in the practice. There's no real expectation. I had a lady write to me a few days back saying, Nithya, please teach me how to surrender. Teach me how to surrender. Because I'm, whatever I'm doing is failing. I'm full of worry, full of stress. Teach me how to surrender. So I asked her, uh, why would you assume that worry and stress is not also a part of your journey of surrender? In other words, it's not just about surrendering to outer events, outer happenings but also so-called inner events, inner happenings, inner stress, inner calm, inner ease, inner dis-ease, lack of ease. So wouldn't true surrender include all of it? Not just externally I accept what's happening. At least that's where I find myself these days. It's not just about accepting what's happening in my environment.
if there is some inner response or reaction to what's happening in the environment. Then that's also part of the happening. And I want to use the example of a mirror today. Mirror, if you want to know what is a mirror, you're going to have a very hard time because every time you look at a mirror, it's reflecting something a little different. You travel all over the world with this mirror. And every time it reflects something different. You're trying to understand, but what is this mirror? But it's very hard, whether you zoom into it, whether you zoom out, the mirror doesn't reveal itself, it just reveals what it's reflecting. So it's the same situation when we try to know who we are and we try to know who God is, what consciousness is, you're going to have a hard time in the beginning because if you're assuming it's a thing like other things, oh, I had a blissful feeling, oh, I saw a light, saw a bright light in my meditation, then actually you're actually missing the point. It's not like that. I remember years back reading a book. There was some book, some spiritual book. This man talked about, he meditated and in between his third eye, he saw a bright light and he realized he had seen his soul. And something in me instinctively said, you know, how do you know that's your soul? That's just an experience. And I, it was good for me to mistrust that because these kinds of things, I had this experience, that experience. There seems to be no end to that. Douglas Harding talks about the three kinds of mystical experience. The first are the unusual or the strange experiences. You have an out of body experience. You have a lucid dream. You have an intuition about something and it happens. You have, you see someone's aura. You remember some past life. These are called unusual, strange experiences. For most people, this is what spirituality is about. This is what mysticism is about. These kind of unusual, strange things. That's level one. And level two is peak experiences. So feeling intensely blissful, feeling intensely connected to everyone and everything, losing a sense of boundary, forgetting all your worries for a while. The peak experiences, feeling bathed in the love of God. So they're beautiful, they're powerful, but... Uh, there are a few features. One is they don't come on demand. It's almost like they happen, right? They just happen. So you can't necessarily make them happen. They just happen when they happen. And by their very nature, because they're peak experiences, well, they don't last. So sooner or later, usually a few minutes later, a few hours later, at the most a few days or weeks later, it's gone. So it's not the same anymore. So that's the second category, peak experiences. First is strange experiences, unusual experiences. Second is peak experiences. In the third category, 
which very few people ever come to, very few people ever value. Valley experiences. Now, valley experiences are, there's nothing much to talk about, not particularly strange or unusual. It's not particularly blissful or some very fascinating and unusual feeling or something like that, no. Just being with what is, awareness of what is, clarity of what is. Like I said, your unmodified experience. Just the way it is. And that might not be what you want, but you'll have to admit that's what life wants. Or if you want, that's what God wants. Because why? Because it's happening. You may want something different. You may want an unusual experience or a peak experience. But this is what life wants. So in a valley experience, your will matches life's will, God's will. Why? Because for a few seconds, a few minutes, a few moments, you're not trying to modify it. You're not trying to improve it, change it, hold on to it in any way. So the thing about the third category is it's always available. Sickness and in health, young and old, rich and poor, living in a city, living in a peaceful countryside, villa, living in nature, underwater, in the sky always available. And that's why it's, uh, it's truly yours. It's your true nature. But most people are not going to value this. You see what's freely available, like most of us. Do you even think about the air you breathe? unless you're in a very polluted place or a, you know, very smelly place. Who thinks about the air they breathe? I once had to go to a public toilet where every breath was painful. Then I realized, oh, this is intense. Even being there for two minutes, three minutes was an intense experience. But otherwise, who thinks about the air we breathe? Just take it for granted. So it's very obvious, it's always there. You know, in, in space, you need special cups to drink water. Normal cups do not do it. Water just becomes a ball in space. You need special cups to drink water. So only on earth, we take drinking water for granted. Oh, it takes a special cup to drink water. Not so easy to drink water in space. So we can take gravity for granted. So this mirror-like nature of awareness can be taken for granted. Reflecting everything that shows up. And just like a normal mirror, you move around, suppose you were to put a mirror on your chest, move around all day. All day, it'll be reflecting different things. But doesn't your awareness do the same thing? Only thing is in awareness, not only does it include sights, it also includes sounds, smell, taste, touch. 
inner thoughts, inner feelings, sensations, just reflected. And none of it, none of it actually creates, creates a stain. There's no stain. There can be a lingering thought, but even that doesn't stain. When the thought comes, it's a resistant thought, oh, I shouldn't be like that. They shouldn't be like that. Life shouldn't be like that. Then in that moment, it'll feel unpleasant. But this mirror never gets stained, never gets scratched. It's as stainless, scratch-free as when you were just born. Normal psychology does not understand this. Normal psychology feels you are bent out of shape by your experiences of childhood, etc. Only trans transcendent psychology understands what I'm talking about. So what I'm trying to say is that none of your experiences, external, internal, pleasant, unpleasant, happening according to your wishes or not according to your wishes, none of those experiences have the ability to stay in the mirror, the mirror of awareness the mirror of consciousness, the mirror of life, the mirror of God. And I'm going to say something strange, but that's actually the way it is. Don't try to improve your experience and don't try to not improve your experience. I'll say it again. Don't try to improve your experience. And don't try to not improve your experience. The casualty of the statement is this tendency to try. And so if it's to be accepted, it's accepted. And if it's to be improved, it's improved. There's no trying. And if it has to work, it works. And if it has to fail, it fails. And there's no ripple. There's no residue. There's no meaning. Therefore, I am like this. You are like this. God is like this. Life is like this. And even if there are such thoughts, even they don't stick.
I saw this interesting short video of a Chinese fly trap. It has this rotating lid. There's some kind of food like thing which attracts the flies. And this lid slowly, slowly closes and very slowly it goes. Slowly, slowly turns, closes in. The fly hardly notices it. Little by little, the lid corners, 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 and completely corners the fly. And it pushes it into a chamber where it's locked. Something like that. Your sense of being this doer, separate self who's making decisions. Who's responsible for things, who's getting affected by things. That sense gets more and more narrow, trapped, limited. All the air is squeezed out of it. To the point where it's literally just a happening. Life is just a happening. It's a highly convincing dream, but a dream nevertheless. Highly convincing dream. With things happening on the so-called outside, so-called inside, but even the inside is also outside. Because it's all a reflection. There's actually no inside. Anything you're experiencing is outside. Because who you are is mirror-like, untouched, unscratched, unscarred by anything. Even if you think you're scarred, just that thought causes pain. Actually, you're not scarred. Great example is the body. Heart is beating. Blood is getting oxygenated. Cells are dividing. Immune system is protecting us. Digestion is happening. Elimination is happening. Kidneys are filtering the blood. Liver is doing its own job. Brain has all its systems going. Then there's skin, there's nails, there's hair, eyes. Where in all of this are you involved? Let's check. Isn't it just a happening? You say, no, no, but I can move my hand. Okay, one move your hand. Where did that thought come from? Oh, I thought it. Oh, you thought it. I can take a deep breath. Oh, but where did the thought come from? Take a deep breath. It just came, right? It spontaneously came, the thought of taking a deep breath. The thought of, I've been sitting too long, I need to stand up. I've been indoors too long, I need to get some fresh air. Doesn't it just spontaneously come up? I had an experience today, I went sneaker shopping and there were two sneakers I really liked, two shoes I really liked, I couldn't decide. So I just put one on one leg, one on the other leg and just kept walking around the shop. And a part of me is like, I like both of them. I can't decide, they're all right, keep walking. Keep walking, keep walking. I walked for almost four, three or four minutes. 
And at some point, it was so fascinating to watch. At some point, one option just faded away. And there was just one option. I was just amazed to watch that experience. Like, I just, mentally, I couldn't decide. And then at one point, it was like, okay, this is the one. Fascinating. Decisions make themselves. Decisions make themselves. Looks like I'm deciding, but it's deciding. Somehow life decides. There was even the option to buy both sneakers. It was not even like I had to choose. I could even have taken both. So the option was take one, take the other, take both or take none. And of all of those options, it was like, okay, take this one. Amazing. It decides. So if it decides, it bears the consequences of the decision, not me. In our last session, I shared this process of unpacking where you have the sense of one thing's better than the other. Is it really is that true? So really check. What, what happens when I believe this is better than that? What happens if I get this? And then what happens? And then what happens? You just go all the way down as far as you can go. And similarly with the other side, okay, so what happens if the other thing happens? And then what happens? And then what happens? You go as far as you can. You do this a few times, you start realizing it's not so clear what's better, what's not better. Often it's an assumption. This assumption also just came from somewhere, it just popped out of nowhere. So I'd love for you to all experience one moment. Just one moment is enough. Where you drop the assumption that you are the doer. You are the experiencer. You are the thinker. You are the decider. Let's go through. I'm going to add them one by one, cumulatively. So just for a moment, would you be willing, would you be open to the possibility that you're not the doer? Doing is happening. And just for a moment, Would you be willing to be open to the possibility that you're not the experiencer? Experience is just happening. Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching. Just happening. Just like weather happens. Just like trees respond to sunlight. Seeds respond to 
moisture in soil. Similarly, your sensors respond to their sensory inputs. And just for a moment, would you be open to the possibility that you are not the thinker? Thinking just happens, thoughts just happen. And some are pleasant, some are unpleasant. Some are helpful, some are not so helpful, depending on what you're trying to achieve. They just happen. Not the doer, not the experiencer, not the thinker. And just for a moment, would you be open to the possibility that you're not even awareness? You're not even consciousness. In other words, you're not even the dreamer of this dream. The dream is just dreaming itself. You be open to the possibility that just like a mirror is forever mysterious, it reflects many things, but we don't know what the mirror actually is. That who you are are forever mysterious, unknown, unknowable, beyond concepts. Would you be open to that possibility for just one moment? So let's tie all of them together one more time. So you repeat this in your own heart. What if I am not the doer? I am not the experiencer. I am not the thinker. I am not the decider. I'm not even awareness. And what if what I'm really looking for is not to be found in unusual experiences, special experiences, strange experiences, peak experiences. That is always already available in normal, ordinary valley experiences. Every experience is complete by itself, as it is. Reflected just once in that way, in the mirror of eternity, in the mirror of God's eyes, in the mirror of love's eyes, life size just once anything that comes into your awareness attention is instantly promoted to the center of the universe for that moment And it happens by itself. So don't 
try to improve your experience, your life. And don't try to not improve your experience, your life. Like Maharaj said, when effort is necessary, effort will appear. When effort is not necessary, effort will not appear. Because it came and went by itself. It's got nothing to do with you. Purification happens by itself. Recognition happens by itself. There's nowhere to go, nothing to achieve. Purnamada, Purnamidam. Whole and complete here. Whole and complete there. And this completeness leads to deeper and deeper completeness, deeper and deeper wholeness, revealing intricate mirror like perfection into infinity. All right, very nice, everybody. If you want to take a deep breath, you can. I have about five more minutes. Anybody wants to say something? You can unmute yourself. Yes. Hi, Nitya. Hi. For such a deep uh, session. Uh -huh. So uh, one of the uh, questions I have is like from uh, one of your previous sessions where you said uh, short moments of uh, resting in clarity repeated many times is something yeah. you know you, you had uh, uh, advised. So I was just uh, wondering like what exactly am I supposed to do when I remember this uh, uh, suggestion of yours? So what do I remember in that short moments? Short moments of resting in clarity is exactly what we did today. We were resting in the clarity of our unmodified experience. So like when seeing, like right now you're seeing or hearing me, then there's just seeing and hearing. Maybe you're thinking about what I'm saying. There's just thinking. So there's an awareness that, yeah, seeing is seeing is happening. Here is happening, hearing is happening, understanding is happening, or some question is coming up, which is fine. Um, this feels pleasant, this feels unpleasant, this is flowing, this is not flowing. In other words, whatever is reflected in that mirror in that moment is just seen for what it is, outer experience, inner experience. That's a glimpse, That's a, it's like a snapshot, short moments of resting in clarity repeated many times and, and you'll forget. You'll get lost in the dream again. You'll go into your next thought, you'll go into your next plan. And then again, you say, oh, okay, this is, <laughs> you see, we get into the flow of things. We get kind of lost in the busyness. You become whatever, a husband, a father, an employee, whatever you are, you become that for a moment, which is fine. And then you realize, ah, it's all just happening in awareness. <laughs> all of this show, all of this is just happening in awareness. And that's when you recognize it's all happening in awareness. That's a short moment, resting in clarity. 
And I like Douglas Harding's teaching. So from that perspective, every time I recognize I can't see my own face, I can imagine my face, but I can't see my face. And what I'm seeing that in the camera, in the Zoom, there's a one picture of so-called me. But that's uh, very unreliable because if I bring it close, it changes. If I take it further away, it changes. If I take it very far away, it's no longer a human being. It's a, it's a, it's a building. If I take it even further away, it's a planet. So that that's unreliable, right? That face is an unreliable face. In fact, as I change, as I do this, completely changes. It doesn't look the same anymore. <laughs> so my true face is not so unreliable. My true face is not like this. My true face is actually not a face, it's a space. So these are all different ways of answering your question, that this is a short moment of resting and clarity. Or to make it even simpler for you, if I was to say, would you allow yourself one moment of no desire, no desire, no desire to improve your experience, change your experience, anything. Just try right now, try. Give yourself five seconds. Just no desires for five seconds. What does no desires mean? You're not trying to tamper with your experience, improve your outer experience, inner experience, any experience. You may not even like my answer. That doesn't matter. Okay, Nithya is trying his best. Fine. And it's just, it's like everything just settled. That's an example of short moments of resting and clarity. Getting it? Got it. Okay. And, and just uh, one more question. Like uh, when we say just being, like, uh, you know, you talked about the uh, four levels of consciousness and, you know, from victim, creator, uh, mm -hmm. to a, a channel of blessings. The fourth one was just being. Being, yeah. Uh, just being means what? So being is nirgun. It's another way of saying it is victim is tamasic. You are uh, expecting life to be different and it's not. So creator is rajasic. You feel empowered. No, no, I can make a change. I can improve my health. I can earn more money. I can improve my relationships. And I will. And I will take the steps. And I will learn. And I will talk to people. And so rajasic. So you're active, right? Not just, oh, my goodness, how terrible my life is. So that's rajasic. It's a big improvement over tamasic. Then there's sattvic. Sattvic is, oh, but it's not about getting what I want. It's the state of being. So it's about the love. It's about the connection. It's about the gratitude. I don't have to have the world's biggest house. I can have a reasonable house and love my house and be grateful for my house. Or it was not about the house. It was about the quality of mind. That's Satvik. Satvik is about the state of consciousness. And Nirgun is just like mirror-like, like we talked about right now, mirror-like. So whatever is reflecting in the mirror is just reflecting in the mirror, right? So now there's not even a sense of uh, good quality, bad quality, pleasant, unpleasant. It just is. This is where the, you know, the contradiction, the pure and impure, good and bad, you know, selfish and, and selfless, all these contradictions just drop away. Because in a mirror, everything is reflected. In a mirror, a beggar is reflected. A billionaire is also reflected. The mirror doesn't say, oh, you're, a be you're a beggar, please pay two rupees to... No, no, no. Mirror just reflects. Mirror makes no such distinction. The earth's the gravity doesn't say, oh, you're a sinner, I'll not hold you. Oh, you're a saint, I'll hold you. No, no, gravity just accepts everybody. Sunlight falls equally on everybody. In the same way, this awareness, this mirror-like quality, that's the being state. There is no this or that. So it's very similar to your other question about some, uh, short moments. Well, similar to, like, can I say that just being is something uh, similar to what you said, having no desire? Yeah, because when you're not having a desire, at least for a short moment, then that is a state of not doing. Desire creates doing. Desire creates, at the very least, it will create thought, right? Kaise, kaise kare, kaise, either how do I get something or how do I remove something? Desire typically is about getting or removing two, two aspects of desire. Something has to be changed, right? So without the desire, there is a state of being. Although there could also be ignorance. There could be a state of just lost. <laughs> that's possible, I guess. That's, that's why the Buddha says there are three things. There's wanting, there's not wanting, which are actually both aspects of desire. Wanting is a desire, not wanting is a desire. And third is just ignorance, not knowing. So without desire and the clarity of what's what's here, that would be a state of being. Okay. 
And the slight, it, it's the being is the door because there's a slight sense of I am being. <laughs> I am I am I am aware because why in the in the practice we just did I even added awareness to it. What if I am not even the one who is aware? What if I'm not even that aspect of the mirror that's aware? Right? Even awareness is part of the equation. So then even the, the, then beyond the being, it's like there's just so in fact Nisakdal Maharaj talks about this. He says uh, all our spiritual practices get us to the I am. But the reality is beyond the I am, prior to the I am. So the spiritual practices are nice in that sense, they get you to I am. But I am, he says, is the beginning of the delusion or the ending of the delusion. <laughs> From the I am, everything attaches to the I am. I am Sandeep. You know, I live in Mumbai. I am a Mumbai curve. You know, I am this I am. Then all the things attached to that. The train, it's like the, it's like the engine. It's like the engine. So <laughs> look beyond the engine. Look beyond the I am. And then you tell ah, oh, it's just sky-like. It's just no words actually apply. Getting a sense? Thank you. Thank you. So Lovely. Much. Yeah, D, go ahead. And then we'll go to Pinky and then we'll end with that. Yeah. D. Hi, Nitya. Hi. Uh, Nitya, you said something about uh, the decisions make themselves. And um, my question was with respect to, and then, you know, um, my question with res was with respect to, like, when it comes to our responses, right? Like, we respond differently to different people. Um, and then, you know, um, and that would be because of, you know, uh, past experiences or, current state of mind or as once you, you had said it was mood and um, how much of control do we have in that moment when we are uh, responding so to speak is it also a higher consciousness that is working through us or do we really actually have a certain degree of control no uh when you say we, we have to look for this we, right? Who is this we we are referring to? That's what that's what Ramana Maharishi said. He said, instead of discussing whether we have destiny or free will, let's talk about who is subject to de destiny and who is employing that free will. So that's what, go looking for, before we answer the question of control, let's look for who is the one who is in control. Who is that we you're talking about? Go looking for that. And once you find it, then we can have a discussion that, oh, yeah, this one does have control or doesn't have any control. Play play with this thought. I'm going to offer you the thought. Just play with this thought. What if nothing, nothing, and by nothing, I actually mean absolutely nothing, not inside, not outside. What if nothing is under control? Play with the thought. And I'm not even saying believe it. Maybe you don't believe it. That's fine. Maybe you say, well, that's a very dis dis uh, distressing way to live my life. All right. But just play with the thought for maybe a day or maybe for an hour or maybe for a minute. What if nothing is under control? For me, it's a very relaxing thought. I don't know about you. <laughs> yeah, it is relaxing in that sense. Yeah. <laughs> but then... And, and... And add another layer to it. What if nothing needs to be under control? Because you see, there's a strong sense of, I know what's best. This is such a deep, don't we all have it at some level? I know what's best. I know what's best for me. I know. I really know. So then go through it. <laughs> and then it happens or it doesn't happen. And then it happens also sometimes that doesn't satisfy. If it doesn't happen, of course, it doesn't satisfy. So, now what were you saying? Um. No, I, I, what I was trying to say is that, um, you know, the thing is the way we connect or relate with other people uh, has a direct impact on how we feel. So, for example, a pleasant conversation will make you feel good with True. someone. An unpleasant conversation with, with someone uh, will not make you feel good, even if... Yeah. So, you know, the I that you are thinks that this person deserves a little bit of 
you know uh needs you need to have a difficult conversation with someone but even despite that it will not leave you feeling good so i guess where my um uh, dilemma is that uh like i i remember you said that who is the one talking is it you talking or someone else talking but the fact is the consequences <laughs> is this physical Deco, form the, or this <laughs> isn't pleasant defined by the unpleasant if your whole life you only had pleasant conversation would you call it pleasant you would not even call it pleasant you only call something pleasant because there is a there isn't a been an experience of unpleasant yes what is pleasant without that what is a good relationship is it not some mental or actual experience you've had of an un- unpleasant or a bad relationship what is a good relationship don't these things define each other so how, how mm-hmm. what, what is it and i just want to offer you this frame that drop drop the idea that d is having this experience and just try this new idea that i'm giving you for for a change the experience is having the experience mm. when d is having the experience it's very problematic because d is at all kinds of uh, you for example you worked in the hotel industry you worked in the top hotels in the country and in other countries now because you worked in the top hotel when you go to a hotel you have all these storage of experiences oh this hotel aise hai aise so you actually will have a hard time experiencing a hotel for what it is because you have seen better hotels you have seen worse hotels you have seen average hotels so someone like you and will actually have a hard time taking an experience for what it is because you've had so many experiences of hotels hmm isn't it but for someone who's never been to a hotel before they'll say yeah hey, how wonderful carpeting oh how wonderful paintings oh how wonderful they're giving me water to drink and they're like they're they're, they're in they're in bliss but you're like what are you talking about hotels have carpets hotels have ac hotels have water <laughs> that's not what we decide you understand hmm like i once went to a hotel which for some reason their ice machine was broken and there was a five star hotel they had no ice the entire hotel and we were like rupal and i were there we like i can't believe it five star hotel with no ice five star and we kept saying five star hotel with no ice but that's because we have a background of always having ice in five star hotel we've never never been to a five star hotel with no ice right yeah. but for someone who's just gone there and unko bol diya ki baraf nahi hai to theek hai nahi hai to nahi hai there are many other things ac chal raha hai yahan par lift chal rahi hai yahan par khana mil raha hai yahan par you understand so an experience yeah. compared to itself is never a problem an experience compared to something else will be better worse and so on and so forth which is similar to mm-hmm. what i was telling sandeep right it's an unmodified experience if you just have the conversation and the only benchmark for the conversation is that conversation now what's the problem now what's the problem yeah. now it's neither pleasant nor unpleasant it's only pleasant in comparison to something it's only unpleasant in comparison to something by itself it just is Hmm. And maybe your heartbeat will go up at some point, and maybe your breathing will go up at some point. Maybe your face will get hot at some point, and that's just what it is. That's just what the body does. Body does what it does. Mind does what it does. And maybe there are pleasant thoughts flowing. Maybe there are uh, painful thoughts flowing, and that's just what it is. You see, you see how clean it is. It's just clean. No, that's true. Nitya, just one quick follow up is, but however, you know, all of this that we are learning, or all these tools and techniques, um. you know when we are within the confines of social conduct and courtesy and courteousness and politeness and kindness and compassion when we roll in all those concepts that we are practicing and we are trying to imbibe into our day to day uh to bring into our life uh, you know the concept of um, loving kindness and so on so that's when you have a conflict with this experience so, like, that's oh, no. level we talked about level 2 level 2 is peak experiences what you're talking about is level 2 mysticism i want to be in a state of love i want to be in a state of yeah. compassion i want to be in a state of gratitude yeah. that's level 2 level 2 is peak experiences come to let today's session was about level 3 level 3 is mirror like valley experiences and valley experiences include all the ups and downs the bumps this is a higher teaching than the previous teaching don't don't confuse level 2 and level 3 level 2 okay. is for beginners level 1 and level 2 is for beginners level 3 is for those of you who have tuned in tonight for tonight's show <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> thank you chalo briefly pinky then i'll have to leave yeah. 
Go ahead. So this was the Nitya Netflix best show. <laughs> yeah, it was like a very simple show, which uh, for me it was like uh, you know, uh, uh, like once you said like what uh, Sandeep was asking, short moments of resting and clarity. That was always yeah. a question mark in my heart, but I thought I understood, but I, 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 I feel that I did not receive it properly. But today it was very clear. For those thirty seconds or fifteen seconds or five seconds, you know. You made it so simpler, you know. When you ask about that contemplation, and who am I? Who am I? So you made it very, very simple today. That for that one moment, if I can pause eleven times a day, you know, that one minute meditation. That uh, what if I'm not a doer, thinker, experiencer, or a decider? So it was like very, very, very pretty for me. Like I felt like a butterfly in my heart. You know? mm. It was very powerful. Great, and that's a sign for me. That's a sign that it's closer to the truth. Any time you're feeling light, you're feeling clean, uh, you're feeling in alignment. To me, this is the only purpose of feelings. The purpose of feelings is to tell you how accurate or inaccurate your thinking is. This is the main purpose of feeling. When your thinking is inaccurate, it feels heavy. It feels stressful. It feels burdensome. When your thinking is accurate, then your feelings are lighter, cleaner. And when you are not thinking, then there are actually no no feelings in terms of no emotions. There may still be some sensation, but there's no emotion. Why? Because you're you're one with it. Yeah. Emotion only comes when there is some kind of thought. Even a thought of like love and compassion will create some kind of feeling. Yeah. Some kind of you can call it an emotion if you like or a feeling. But when there's no thought. There's a beautiful, I think you, I shared with all of you, Pinky definitely heard this, that when the monk is meditating in the cave and he enters a state of profound love, profound love, universal love, all the birds come outside and they're chirping. All the birds come, all the animals get attracted. But when the monk enters enlightenment, all the birds fly normally, the animals walk by, no one notices. I found that so beautiful. So the first one has a magnetism to it, right? It's like the peak experience, the magnetism, the very beautiful thought, so loving, it's so attractive. But that's not natural in a way, it's, it's slightly unnatural. Yeah. But when you become sky-like, the birds don't notice. There's no magnetism left. It's just, it's just, it's just clean. There's no magnetism. There's no, no display anymore. You have to be a something to attract something. Yeah. But when you're a nothing, who are you going to attract? And so that's when you realize that the ordinary people you see in your life, the ordinary people in the marketplace, on the bus stand, I don't know how many of you use buses, in the Uber stand or whatever, the railway station, bus station, plane station, whatever, airport, they are the Buddhas. You will actually see them as Buddhas. You'll stop going to monasteries and ashrams to see Buddhas and gurus. They are the Buddhas. They are the awakened ones. They actually are. I'm not even exaggerating. We have a certain concept of specialness that we've added to it. Oh, that means loving. Oh, that means something. That means pure. This is the concept. You have no clue. When that drops from your eyes, then you'll realize, wow, they were all around me. I was surrounded by Buddhas all around. I was surrounded by Bodhisattvas, by Arahants all around. But I had a concept that prevented me from seeing it. Yeah, like NSG says, right? Uh, the, your problem is, or uh, Rumi says, like, our problem is that we like one side of the dream, one part of the dream mm. we like. So, uh, so I was thinking when I have a bad dream, I hate it, right? Oh, bura ho jayega, hena ho jayega, dhimka ho jayega. But a acha dream hoega, to phir mujhe wo dream dream nahi lagta. Haan, ye to shubh hai, yeah. aisa hai. Haan, bhoat bari. Acha pakra. <laughs> yeah, so it is like that. It is like that. So I was just thinking when you said, don't even try to improve your experience and don't not even try not to improve your experience, you know. So instead of, right. instead of having an intention when I sleep, you know, like, oh, live from a state of miracle, be a miracle, open to miracle. No, bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. Just <laughs> one thought, you know. They mm. the experiencer and decider. Just contemplate yeah. on that. Good stuff. And, yeah. All right. Yeah, go, briefly, go ahead. Yeah. So for me, the short moment of clarity are like this. 
one mass at the moment. Love and it. they are repeated <laughs> many times. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Good. Well said. Well. Good. We'll pause for a few seconds. So what if you are not the doer? What if you're not the experiencer? What if you're not the thinker? Not the decider? What if you're not even the one who is aware of any of this? What if? Would you allow yourself a few moments without any desire whatsoever? And return to that many, many times. Like returning home. And so it is. And so it is. All right. Thank you all for joining today. We meet again.